Good afternoon and good morning. It's Mark Johnson from Loyalty360. Hope everyone's happy, safe, and well. I want to welcome you back to another edition of our Leaders in Customer Loyalty series, where we speak with leading brands about what they're seeing and hearing on the front lines of customer channel and brand loyalty. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Pear Jensen. He is the head of loyalty at Stop and Shop. How are you today, Pear? Doing good, Mark. Yeah, doing excellent. And I'm very glad to, to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. A absolutely. Thank you for taking the time. It was great seeing you at the 2024 Loyalty Expo. Uh, hopefully you had a wonderful time there and uh, looking forward to this discussion. Likewise. Thank you. First off, we'd like to start these on a more personal level. So it'd be great to know a little bit more about you and your background. Uh, and then obviously we'd love to know you, about your role at Stop and Shop, what you do there, uh, you know, what your focus is. Yep. Uh, let me see. Um, I, I would say, you know, if I summarize, my, my background is a little bit eclectic. Uh, my, uh, my first degree was in engineering, my second one in business. And so from an educational standpoint, those two actually come well together in, in the role I'm in today. But other than that, my business experience kind of crosses consumer insights, advanced analytics, starting businesses. I started a business, uh, started Catalina Marketing in, in Germany. I've worked in finance. Uh, I've worked with category management. So all those different uh, perspectives, they come together really nicely in this role. And, and I believe I've been able to elevate the, the value of loyalty to our company uh, such that the interest at the leadership level has, uh, has grown uh, tremendously. And there are some solutions, maybe we talk about those today, that really has, has, has uh, brought the attention of, of the leadership into the, into, lo into the loyalty um, program that we have in place. Okay, great. Um, and real quick, uh, there a fun fact that something you enjoy outside of work, jumping out of planes, uh, you know, fluent in 18 languages. What's a fun fact? Yeah, yeah, excellent. So uh, uh, I, I flew uh, gliders at, uh, uh, at a young age. So um, these are full-scale gliders. We built our own uh, planes in the university. That's kind of uh, one thing that's, uh, but that's a long time back in, in time. And then uh, I climbed Mount Chimborazo in uh, Ecuador. It's a point on Earth that gets closest to the sun. So okay. it's a fascinating uh, thing to to try. And uh, this, the, I'm going to call it the stupid thing was to do it without acclimatizing to the altitude first, and just go straight up. Um, it was it was incredibly hard. Um, I did that with a number of friends, uh, but at a time we were all in incredibly good shape, but still it was a incredible challenge to, to, to make that, to make that climb. Okay. Excellent. Uh, I'm not going to try that, but, uh, it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, first off, uh, the stop and shop go rewards program, a very successful program. Members can earn points, uh, go points for groceries and or fuel savings. Could you tell us a little bit about how the program works, some of the benefits of the program, and how consumers engage with the program when they join? Yeah, and let me just take a step back. We we um, and I don't know the the exact history, but going back thirty odd years, uh, I believe Stop and Shop was one of the the first retailers, maybe here in the U.S., to to kind of offer up a loyalty program, and it was purely I'm going to call it offline. So it requires just a card. And the focus at that time was to collect an address. And so you could do direct mail and, and, uh, and send personalized offers out you know, that way. Since then, a lot of things have happened in tech. And now our focus is really uh, to get consumers to interact with us through the web or the app. And that is kind of an overlay that we've put into our loyalty program. So that's what we call Go Rewards, which requires you to interact with the program through an app or, or the web. And so in there, you have kind of what I would call legacy ways of earning a value or savings yeah. is you spend $1, you get one point. Pretty straightforward. Then we have an overlay of offers that run in the circular where you can earn additional points for buying uh, single items or family of products. And you can, can kind of accelerate the points that you earn within the program. And then the latest overlay here is Go Rewards where we then add in personalized offers. They're all fully digital. And that's kind of where the really the acceleration happens in terms of participation. 
in value to, to shoppers. And within that, once you get to a certain point level, you can then go into the app and you we call it designate your points. You can choose that to redeem for groceries or for fuel. And we have uh, partnerships with, with, uh, uh, with Shell where you can go. We have our own gas stations where you can go and re redeem those those points. And then furthermore, we kind of uh, do some accelerators in there that the points uh, you can also use to get, uh, we call them special offers. So it might be a $3 item, let's say spinach, that you get for a low points, uh, maybe 20 points only, right? So for 20 cents, you can get a $3 item uh, in, in reality. So, so we're trying to kind of boost the value that you can get out of the program in a number of different ways. Excellent. You, you mentioned some of the legacy issues or opportunities or maybe even challenges that 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 grocers have or you may have, but it's a big challenge for many brands. It was talked a, a good deal about the 2024 Loyalty Expo. How do you address that? How, how do you kind of work around legacy issues or even legacy behaviors potentially to, to optimize the program in a manner that you would like to optimize the program? Yeah. Um, so I... Uh, we recognized uh, a few years back that direct mail was getting too too expensive for us to to do on an ongoing basis, uh, and uh, you would say, okay, within the loyalty program, we've got millions. We got we got maybe ten million households for whom we have the address for, and now we can't really reach them anymore. What's the what's the value in terms of digital of having information, but you can't reach them in any digital way? And uh, through, I'll, I'll keep the story short, but you, I would say I turned that weakness into a strength by taking, uh, uh, by, by uh, looking at a solution to two problems. One is this problem that we can't reach the majority of our shoppers in a digital way and combine that with another, uh, I'm going to call it business uh, challenge, which is that digital coupons uh, over the, past few years have increased in um, in becoming a larger uh, pain point for shoppers. And because it's a pain point for shoppers, it kind of got elevated to consumer advocates, consumer reports, uh, even, uh, you know, send out a letter to, to the industry uh, maybe a year and a half ago. And from there, it's even accelerated into legislation in, in a number of different states. And we were we're kind of at the forefront of that in trying to solve for that pain point in conjunction with that weakness of most of our shoppers being uh, I'm going to call it offline. We came up with a number of different solutions, and but but one of them that I'd like to highlight is it seems like simple, the kiosk, but we're but with that kiosk we're enabling our shoppers that were offline now to interact with us online, but it's not a copy of the web experience. We made it simpler and really directed to that shopping trip you're making in the moment that week that you can get the offers that we have specifically for you, either personalized offers or mass offers that are fully electronic. Yep. Create awareness for it. There's a printout, so you have an overview of what uh, uh, what uh, has been uh, made available to you now, plus a referral to the weekly ad that we have. Pick that up. It's right there with the kiosk together. Pick those things up. Now, people, some people will use it as, as a shopping list. And the, the feedback has really been tremendous from, from our shoppers. I'll go there, and um, uh, I'll have a, uh, a stop and shop. Shirt on, and customers come up to me, and, and I'll hear something like, Mr. Stop and Shop, this is the best thing you've done ever. And uh, uh, Mr. Stop and Shop, I live down the road by this ex-retailer, but now I just go to a Stop and Shop. You've made it so easy for me. And so that's kind of anecdotal. But then I look, and not but, but I look at the, the hard facts, and it's been a smashing success. In terms of participation, we're three times higher what we set as uh, what we understand is an industry benchmark of what uh, uh, what interaction participation you get with something like a kiosk. Yeah. In terms of um, 
incremental sales in terms of other operational uh, things that we that we deal with if we don't have the kiosk for example um people can always get the the offers available if they are a full offline customer yeah. but you'd have to ask and that process can take too much time and so it's a loss in time for the customer, it's a big pain point, but also for the associates to, to deal with it. And so we've solved for a number of different uh, um, problems at the same time with one one solution. And there is probably seven or eight different dimensions to, to the problem. And they all kind of come together really nicely. Excellent. So you talked about personalization. Personalization is a very uh, impactful and opportunity for brands today. They, they want to make sure they have the right data. They can communicate with the customers in the channel and the time. Uh, they want to be communicating with the relevant offer. Uh, so you've talked about some of the, the challenges and opportunities you've looked at with regard to customer loyalty, the kiosk. You know, what does personalization mean to stop and shop? And, and how are you uh, affecting it uh, into such an, an impactful way? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so for us, what is personalization? It is first and foremost uh, creating incentives for you to, uh, and those incentives, we uh, we have a number of different categories around that. So one is a basket offer, two is a category offer, and then we have product offers. And within those, we can have different purchase requirements. So for a basket offer, it could be, Mark, you'd have to spend $25. For me, it might be $30. For somebody else, $50. Then we have the reward level. Uh, we deal with points. That's our currency. And that level as well can, as a percent of that threshold, can vary. So now you have kind of multiple dimensions of you know types of offers. Um, and then there's a lot of constraints that we deal with. So if you just purchased uh, detergent, we, we wouldn't want to give you an offer for, for detergent right now. We'd want to wait until it fits into your purchase cycle. So there's a lot of constraints as well that happen in the background, business rules that, that we put in place. All these things uh, kind of makes it mathematically uh, very complex and computationally very intensive. And it's an area I worked in before I joined in the role I'm in now. And it's been super helpful to kind of think about how can we make improvements uh, uh, in how we approach personalization to get more sales, maybe at the same cost or more sales at a lower cost, um, just improving that over time. And we've made some really nice step changes in impact on the business over the past uh, two and a half years that I've been in this role here uh, at at levels that uh, again have kind of created interest from from the leadership team uh, and and lots of um, good feedback from them okay you mentioned being able to operate at scale making improvements in the program and technology is a big piece of that. But there is a great deal of inherent complexity now with regard to technology. The MarTech stack is, is more uh, diverse and complex than ever before. You know, we see in a number of the studies that we do that it's hard to keep up with that technology. So, so how are you managing uh, your MarTech stack and how are you evaluating technology to, to keep up with the opportunities around personalization and customer loyalty? Uh, you know, you know how, how, how do you keep up and, and what are some challenges that you see within your organization on, on managing these disparate uh, platforms? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's, 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 it's a huge challenge. There's, uh, I worked in product management at some point in time within uh, uh, personalization. And at the time, customer, uh, what did we call it? Customer data platforms were kind of growing and and I was keeping, or somebody was keeping track of how many companies there were in that area. And it was growing from, I, I forget the numbers now, but uh, so as an, just uh, from, from concept, right? From 50 to hundreds into yeah. thousands. I mean, it's, 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 it's not even possible to understand that, that whole thing. And, and of right. course uh, it's difficult 
for those companies to kind of create attention for themselves. So they, you know, you oftentimes you hear the same story, right? And so what's really unique about these, these technologies that really can help you. Now, I think that that is probably a very difficult angle to take and go out and evaluate technologies in, the, in that way. So um, to kind of narrow it down, uh, the approach that, that I'm taking is more a, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a structured approach to first I use frameworks like OGSM, so objectives, goals, strategy, metrics, really being clear as to what are we trying to achieve. And then there are going to be certain things I'm looking for in terms of solutions to these kind of larger, uh, you know, but, but all going in the same direction type of problems that may require technology. And so, uh, in, in that essence, it was for, for me, it was to reach our offline customers. So a very different uh, kind of perspective to what problem to solve for. And that narrows down what technology is really to, to, to consider. Yeah. What we then, one of the things we ended up with was, was kiosk. But there are other things like uh, point of sale, the self-checkout screen. It's in the flow of a customer going through the store. You can reach every single person that way. And if we're smart about it, not to slow down the lanes and, and the uh, you know the time you spend there, I believe there's a huge opportunity. So that doesn't require me to kind of go out and scan 10,000 different uh, or 1,000 different uh, companies. Now I can really narrow it down and, and think about what the experience should be. And with that in mind, then uh, find the right solution. Excellent. Uh, you talked about finding the right solution. And something uh, discussed earlier is kind of building agreement within the organization, building momentum in, uh, within the organization. You talked about in, in that in your opening. Uh, that, that's also a very significant challenge for brands as well. And, and we talked about that in our advisory board meeting at the, the conference, as you know. How do you do or how do you approach building alignment, building kind of uh, that executive engagement uh, for your program? Because it's very important, especially with this changing uh, technology landscape, right? He's mentioned 10,000, 12,000, whatever this is this year, and everyone claimed to do the same thing. So how, how do you drive and build that agreement with your organization? Yeah, it's not easy. I don't know if I have an easy answer, but what has helped me is uh, I did work in sales. When I built Catalina up in Germany, it's selling into a large organization. And if you think about a sales approach like large account selling, that's the term I remember from, from uh, years back, might be a different term these days. But you have to, you can't be in your canoe on your own. You gotta get other people uh, on board. Now, in, in the organization of Stop and Shop, it, that's one canoe. We have, I have four other sister companies. That's another canoe. I have a, I have a uh, centralized services organization. That's a third canoe. So I have three canoes where I need to get people on board and I have to, I have to be in all three of them at the same time. So, but as a framework, I think of it as large account selling. You have to go out and really work with people, get their feedback early on before a solution even comes, uh, comes on the table. Uh, and so, so what I did was I, um, when I started in this role at, at Stop and Shop, I met with, yeah, it's probably 150 individuals, not one-on-one -on -one in every single meeting. Some of them might have been a, a small group, a small team, uh, but across Stop and Shop, all the different areas, uh, uh, with sister companies. Uh, in my prior role, I consulted for all the the um, uh, banners under Ajo Del Hayes. So I was familiar, I had contacts around uh, the larger umbrella company. So that enabled me to kind of build uh, alliances and 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 align on on what's important to the business and avoid blind spots. You know, the more information you can get, you can also avoid uh, blind spots that uh, could be an unpleasant surprise later in the process. Absolutely. 
Your program is very successful. Uh, you won uh, at the 2024 Loyalty Expo a bronze award in the technology trends category. You know, aside from receiving validation of the program through the awards that Stop and Shop uh, received, you know, what are one or two things that you are most proud of when it comes to the brand uh, with regard to, you know, the, uh, building such a successful and impactful loyalty program? Yeah. Um, most proud of. I think most proud is really to be able to, and I think we, we talked about that also before, you know, it's it, sometimes loyalty is a little bit on the side. It's not easily understood. You, know, you have to be knowledgeable in many different areas, but it's also, it's very, I'm not going to say technical, uh, analytical in, in being able to, to to understand it, but elevate really the, uh, so to me, I'm proud of being able to elevate the impact of loyalty and explain the story around loyalty uh, to the exec leadership team and get them on board with big decisions, uh, you know, smaller and bigger decisions. We have, yeah, so accomplish that is really what I'm, I'm really, really proud of uh, and um, and something, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just Super excited in in the role I'm in in today because uh, of the results, the attention it's getting, and the way that that we're getting there. Excellent. Uh, are, are there any challenges that you see uh, with regard to your program? Are there are there things that you would like to maybe do better? Uh, you know, getting more alignment internally, uh, having uh, newer technology. If you could have one thing, would there be one thing that you'd wish for? I think that would be something I would wish for. It's not possible. But, uh, you know, the complexity is really high. So, so being able to kind of be more in control of destiny rather than kind of ha have to have so many different canoes to, to think about at the same time, that, that would be perhaps the, the thing I would wish for. That's awesome. Uh, when you look at Stop and Shop, you know, what's next for your organization? Uh, what, what are you guys focused on? What can uh, your customers expect from, you know, uh, the engagement uh, paradigm that you're putting forth, you know, what's next? Mm -hmm. So uh, we tested uh, the kiosk and now we're fully focused on rolling that out. I uh, I uh, uh, made sure we, we had the budget to do it. We got uh, a, a significant funding to, to support it. So, uh, you know, under these, uh, these times, it's often hard to do more and oftentimes it's just do more with less so at the same time we're doing more with less but also we've been able to secure uh, substantial funding to roll this out so that's kind of immediate in front of us so it's pure execution right now and do that with excellence and then from there it is really there there's a couple of things um depending on on the uh, kind of technology technical complexities. We have uh, an option to think about the POS, the self-checkout, and integrate loyalty with that experience. Or uh, another uh, vector would be we have uh, a device we call Scanit. Customers that use it, they love it. And we have an opportunity to expand our reach of uh, with our uh, personalized offers through that device. So one of those two would be the, the next uh, for us to, to uh, expand what we know is working into a group that uh, may not be participating today. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and lastly, a little bit self-serving. You know, what can Loyalty360 do to help you and your team with regard to customer loyalty? Mm -hmm. um, so I like, I like the roundtables that you have. One uh, one thought uh, around it would be just like the uh, maybe a similar format like the panel. So to have you know a pre-selected group with a topic, and the three, the five of them, us are in the kind of the conversation prepared around a specific topic, and we can kind of bounce forth and back. Because what I'm looking for to get out is just inspiration. There's not specific knowledge I'm, I'm looking for. Um, it could be some basic experience. Uh, it could be also that you can have, uh, I think you've had some, some potential vendors. 
out there talking about how they go about things and, and the research they've done. That's also interesting, just for inspiration. So what I'm really, really looking for is just inspiration. Different angles people are taking uh, is is fascinating to to hear about. And that's awesome. I know we talked about that at the advisory meeting uh, on the first day, and we'll do that. I'm pretty sure you just volunteered for a session. So I have a couple of sessions in mind. I'll be back to you today uh, in regard to getting those teed up and, and looking forward to doing more of those for sure. And, and appreciate, obviously, everything you do uh, as well. So for the industry, because mm -hmm. you are one of the stalwarts within the, the industry for sure. Thank you. Absolutely. And now we have time. Uh, we have the awesome quick fire questions. We like to limit these to one word or short phrase answers. Uh, mm -hmm. So the first question is, what is your favorite word? Super. What is your least favorite word? No, especially when the sentence starts, but no. <laughs> okay, good. What excites you? Um, finding and, and solving complex business problems. And, and the finding is difficult. It's really difficult. Yeah. And what do you find tiresome? Routine. Uh, what is your favorite aisle to browse at Stop and Shop? Ice cream. I bike at least 200 miles a week. And so a little bit of ice cream is, is helpful. Excellent. Uh, what book uh, do you like to recommend to colleagues? Um, behavioral economics types of books. I love, uh, for example, Blink. Uh, tipping Point, I look forward to Revenge of the Tipping Point coming out pretty soon. Books like that, I just love and absorb. Uh, and I think it's 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 really valuable for uh, for what we do in business, but uh, also for, for loyalty. 100%. I have a couple of recommendations back to you. I'm not sure if you've read Magic Word by Jonah Berger. Magic Words mm. by Berger came out earlier this year. He's a Wharton professor. Uh, a very interesting book around how to phrase words and what words actually drive behavior in a measurable uh, perspective. And also uh, when. Um, uh, I just forgot who that was by. Daniel Pink. I'm not sure why I forgot that. As you know, Daniel Pink. Uh, talked to him a couple of times, but when by Daniel Pink, another great book. Yes. Yeah. I, I love those. Uh, another one, I think it was called Nudge. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's uh, all those, I, I really can, I, I can absorb them. So I just love it. A hundred percent. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, what profession other than the one you currently have, would you like to attempt? Um, if it's a long kind of uh, the, uh, you know, maybe I'm not on a straight line in, in terms of my, uh, what, what I've, I've done, but I find corporate strategy fascinating. And so uh, we're taking a really strategic uh, uh, approach to loyalty, and I'd love to to kind of apply that to to larger business problems just outside loyalty. Okay. And who inspired you to become the person that you are today? Uh, both my both my dad and my uncle. I would say even my grandmother. Uh, they came from very difficult circumstances. You. Uh, Dad and my uncle, they grew up in, in what was still the last slum in Copenhagen. Denmark is where uh, I'm, I spent most of my life. But they are, they've they just been uh, hardworking, very creative, super smart, and very, you know, they've been at the forefront of the whatever they decided they wanted to do. One was in academics, the other one as a business person. And so uh, they were both kind of great inspirations for me and my grandmother. She was, uh, she was helping people in her town. She was, um, well, without going into all the details, she was just helping, uh, people that were in difficult circumstances and, and, uh, something that has inspired me as well. Excellent. Uh, and what's, uh, the last thing you think about, or what do you think like to think about at the end of the day? End of business day? Uh, business day, your work day, your your personal day. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I we have three children. Uh, two of them are 5,000 miles away. So one of the things that I think about is just how are they doing? And uh, maybe they, they wrote something on our private chat. And just reading about it, I might look at a picture. And, and that just brings me tremendous, tremendous joy. Then the... Uh, for business, it's not every day, but there will be days where it's a business problem. Uh, what's what's next? And if that becomes, a, you know, sometimes it's 
an opportunity. So trying to solve our problem. Sometimes there is, let's say, a more uh, kind of ways of working problem that gets in the way of getting things done. Uh, and then I, then it helps to go on a 200 mile bike ride and that kind of resolves uh, many, many of those, those issues. Excellent. Well, Pear, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you uh, for giving us an overview of the uh, the amazing uh, Stop and Shop program. It's great to hear your approach and how you are driving uh, the internal organization to such heights. And, and obviously, the, the, the program is driving the results as well. So thank you very much for taking the time. It was uh, great speaking with you and, and look forward to hearing more from you soon. Likewise, I enjoyed this. And thank you so much for the, for the opportunity to talk about what we've achieved at Stop and Shop. Absolutely. And everyone, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Make sure you join us back for another edition of our Leaders and Customer Loyalty Series. And until then, have a wonderful day.